1996, number 41 fighter squadron will celebrate its 80th anniversary. The squadron was formed back in 1916 as part of the Royal Flying Corps at Gosport in Hampshire. Its first operational detachment in World War I was to saint Omer in France for fighter attack and reconnaissance duties over the Western Front. We still wear proudly the squadron's badge which depicts the distinctive double-armed cross from the town crest of saint Omer. The squadron's motto, Seek and Destroy, was as apposite in 1916 as it is today. Our history includes many stories of valour and success. In the First World War, 41 Squadron was credited with 124 enemy aircraft destroyed, 112 probable kills, and the destruction of 19 hostile kite balloons. At the outbreak of war in Europe in 1939, the Squadron was equipped with the Supermarine Spitfire. It was one of the few squadrons to fly this famous fighter for the whole of the Second World War. The Squadron provided fighter cover for the evacuations at Dunkirk and was heavily involved in the Battle of Britain. In the whole of World War II, the squadron was credited with 200 enemy aircraft destroyed, 61 probables, and with a further 109 enemy aircraft damaged. 41 Squadron moved on to fly a fine array of fighter aircraft, including Hornets, Meteors, Hunters and Phantoms. For the past 20 years, we have flown the Anglo-French Jaguar single-seat fighter bomber and tactical reconnaissance aircraft from our home base at RAF Coltishall in Norfolk. Our declared specialisations are tactical air reconnaissance and offensive support. We are a deployment squadron and we are ready to take our aircraft and our personnel to any area of tension that might require our skills. In January 1991, number 41 squadron took the lead in the involvement of the Jaguar force in the Gulf War. Operating from Al Maharak Air Base in Bahrain, the squadron carried out pinpoint bombing missions and medium-level reconnaissance sorties over the Kuwaiti theatre of operations. Following Operation Granby, we were deployed to Inselik in Turkey for Operation Warden, where we provided vital reconnaissance information on Iraq's frontline war machine. More recently still, 41 Squadron has operated from Droa del Col in Italy to participate in the NATO and United Nations effort to restore peace to the war-torn former Yugoslavia. The squadron is now enjoying a brief respite from active operations, but we are still busy and we have many commitments. We operate regularly from Bardafoss, our second home in the Arctic regions of northern Norway, and in the past year we have deployed to Scotland, North America, and as part of NATO's Rapid Reaction Force, to Spain. Our schedule often results in many days and weeks separated from our families, but we meet all our commitments enthusiastically, and I believe, very professionally. The Jaguar will take 41 Squadron into the 21st century. The aircraft, with its latest upgrades, continues to be a first-class platform for its roles. With the addition of the new thermal imaging and laser designator, its worth has improved yet further. This video will show not only flying, but also the many areas of support and management that make the flying happen and that exploit the subsequent results. It will, I hope, give you a brief glimpse of our operations over the past year. It shows, indeed, a year in the life of number 41 Fighter Squadron. Typical operations on 41 Fighter Squadron include offensive air support, tactical reconnaissance and air combat training. This usually involves a 20-minute transit to the low-flying areas of northern England and Wales. Before the pilot walks to the aircraft, he has to check for any aircraft limitations and ensure that it is in the required configuration in the maintenance documentation. A walk-round inspection of the aircraft ensures that nothing is amiss. With everything checked, the Jaguar is ready to taxi. Whilst over 20 years old, the Jaguar remains a capable aircraft able to fly without external stores at supersonic speeds. It has an extensive weapons inventory including CRV-7 rocket pods, 1,000 pound bombs, cluster bombs and the sidewinder for self-defense. The aircraft leaves the flight line ready for a training sortie, about to practice the skills that one day might be called upon in time of war. Engines are run up to full power and the aircraft takes off using reheat.
As well as concentrating on his mission, the pilot must maintain situation awareness of all that is around him. This is particularly important in this non-radar